Brethren, we, uh, we can draw near. We can actually come to God. <clears throat> now, this is good news. We've got good news. Um, now, we, we can actually come to him for safety. Like, we don't have to, like, run away. We can actually come to God and find safety in him. We can come to him and find refuge. We actually want to come to him because he actually, he is our reward. We want, we want to come near to God. We, we actually can do this and we desire it. Um, but how is it, how, how is it that this is all, all possible? We, can, we have access to God and we can come boldly to his throne. <clears throat> How is it that, that we have our, we ha, how is it that we have hope? How, how can we do this? Now, now, when we assess who we, as men, that we, this is an amazing thing. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, we're looking for a city and a country, right? We're looking for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. How is it that we can look for these things to come and, and look forward to, to enjoying them? <clears throat> and and, and, and we, we have like an anticipation, like, we, like we, we look for the coming of the Lord. And we don't have to be afraid of that. Amen. We like look forward to it. We want it. We're, come. Let, him, let, let this happen. We want this. Amen. We look for his coming. <clears throat> Brethren, we... Uh, we even have each other. Our, our hearts are knit together. Yes. Our souls are knit together. Now, now in the world, this is an amazing thing because you find that men are, it's, more, it's, it's a lot easier for men to find strife and division than to find unity. And what we have, we, we have found that our hearts have been knit together, mine with yours. Now, now I, I've I've experienced this with all. I'm going to pick on Brother Mike now. Now, now if, I, if you you might not have noticed, but Brother Mike Zoucha is a little bit older than me, and and not only that, but it, geographically we we have different places where we live, and and we're separated in all these ways. But yet, my heart is knit to his. Amen. My soul is knit. We we've been brought together. We we have we have peace with one another. We we are brought brought to one another. <clears throat> we have unfeigned love for the brethren. <clears throat> How is it that we have all these things? How is it that we can look to all these things? How is it that we can be alive and live unto God? <clears throat> something happened. This is some, I have good news to, ta- to tell you today. That something happened. Something took place. God, God did something. This is good. <clears throat> it's all possible. See, God made peace. You can draw near because God made peace. He has provided this for us. <clears throat> and, uh, and so he sent preachers to pro- proclaim it, to proclaim this good news. And we believe the word that was preached. We have peace with God. <clears throat> now, uh, this, this news is so good and it's even it's really good when you realize the condition in which we we were in um, yeah. when we uh, and when God had mercy on us when we realize the condition that we were in the the state that we were in and when God showed mercy that see this is good news to know that we have peace with God <clears throat> so I've um, try to title the, the, the state that we were in. Um, now, this is hard to do. Um, mankind's greatest dilemma, I, I don't know. That almost seems too light of a, of a phrase to even, to, to, to describe such a weighty issue. This is like the greatest issue men ever faced was that they were, they were at odds with a righteous God. <clears throat> Now, it's my persuasion that the great majority of mankind is deceived concerning their biggest problem or their biggest dilemma. 
their worst condition, um, the depths of the pit in which they are in. Men think their greatest dilemma is in the cur current political situation or uh, in the culture that they find themselves in. Maybe they, they, they're deceived into thinking that their, their greatest issues are of those of their own families or the things that go on there. Or perhaps some, some, some think their, their, their greatest problem is, is, the, is their job situation or their financial state. <clears throat> there are some who may even be so deceived that they don't even realize that they are in any danger at all. <clears throat> they will say things like, peace, peace. Now we know there's no peace. <clears throat> some find peace or rest or safety in the things and so, some things such as wealth and in houses and in lands, or some, they, they even title it financial security. <clears throat> they call it. <clears throat> some will uh, even conjure up some kind of like feel-good story for themselves that they think that they, they can find rest in that. They'll lie to themselves and and find rest in something they've told themselves. <clears throat> and some are deceived to the point of even uttering the words peace and safety, as they are in, as if they are in no danger at all. <clears throat> now we know what First Thessalonians 5, 3 says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Escape what? What are we talking about? So what is this great dilemma that, that, men, that mankind has found themselves in? This great, the problem, the great issue. It's the fact that being darkness and unrighteousness and wicked, they are, and sinners, they are in a head-first collision, as the brother said earlier, with the wrath of God. They are facing the wrath of God. <clears throat> Their God, who is the one true, righteous, holy God, who will deal in righteousness. He always works in the, in the realm of righteousness. <clears throat> See, men were at odds, and they still are at odds with God. That's the issue. Found themselves to be at odds with God. And they were uh, from the very first man and from the very first sin, they have set themselves against God. We know this. <clears throat> Men made themselves to be enemies of God. We have found ourselves to be at enmity with him. <clears throat> I don't want to harp on this too long because I have good news for you today. Um, we're talking about the gospel of peace. That's what we're talking about. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to, um, at this time, to God's work. This is where we'll find our edification, is when we consider God's work. What did God do? <clears throat> so let's consider first... Um, I found uh, um, pleasure in, in considering this, um, the, the peace offerings. Um, the first mention of a peace offering is in Exodus 20, verse 24, and it says, this is God speaking to Moses, and he says, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, and thy sheep, and thy... Uh, oxen. In all the places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. <clears throat> now take note. Take note of this. Notice this, that, that God saw our need for an offering of peace before we did. Amen. It was God who commanded that there be an altar made for burnt offerings and for peace offerings. God saw this before we did. 
We were the ones that were in trouble, and God was the one who, who noticed it before we even... He, he's the one that brought this up. That's what I'm saying. He brought this up. <clears throat> he saw this. Um, God mentioned it. Not, not only did he recognize the need, um, but he was... Uh, He's the one who made the provisions for it, right? He said, An altar thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon burnt offerings and peace offerings. He, he saw the need, and he, 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 he saw the, the uh, he, he gave not just the, um, that, but he gave the uh, provisions for it. <clears throat> now you would think that um, if anyone should, uh, should be concerned about a peace offering, it would be mankind. We were, after all, the ones who needed peace. We were, after all, the ones who needed this, this time. <clears throat> right? Um, however, <clears throat> men were short-sighted and, and had lack of understanding of their, uh, their current... Um, they couldn't properly assess themselves. <clears throat> so God made the provision for our greatest need. <clears throat> He's merciful. Now the altar of, of earth uh, was for sacrificing both burnt offerings and peace offerings. So we can conclude that um, on the same altar, the same altar is set for both Burnt offerings and peace offerings. Both of them on one altar, right? <clears throat> on one in one place. Leviticus even goes even further when, uh, when God reveals these things to um, concerning the the priesthood, explaining. Um, there's there's all kinds of things going on in this altar. Um, <clears throat> meat offerings, burnt burnt offerings, meat offerings, sin offerings, uh, trespass offerings. Um, consecrations and uh, sacrifice of peace offerings all were made upon one altar. All these things took place in one, on one altar. <clears throat> um, so consider this. In Jesus' offering of himself, many things were being accomplished in that one sacrifice. In that one thing that he did, many things were ac accomplished. Now, <clears throat> We will, we'll revisit some of these thoughts later on. Um, what God is doing here is he is preparing men for a lesson on what we need. He's preparing us for what we need in the law and what only he can provide. He's providing, he's, he's giving us, he's teaching us. He's actually giving us a tutor and, and, and teaching us something. You need this, only I can provide it. <clears throat> And it's also teaching us of the one in which he will provide all these things. <clears throat> so God is, God is doing something here. See, God, the dilemma was ours. It was never God's, God wasn't like stumped as to what are we going to do with men? They've gone away. How are we going to, re no, God, well, he was, the, he was slain. He was he was actually, Jesus was ordained before the foundation of the earth for this work. <clears throat> for this work. So God wasn't in any way like stumbling or, or, or fumbling as to figure and trying to figure out. God was, this wasn't a tutor for God. This was our tutor to teach us what we needed, what only God could provide. <clears throat> and so as some of uh, you already know, the, uh, the peace offerings um, didn't really provide true genuine peace or, or anything like that <clears throat> between God and men. Um, if anything, it carried uh, with it a reminder that there actually was no peace between God and men. Um, <clears throat> no peace between God and men. Uh, they continued with their own, um, they continually with their own will would, would be allowed to come and bring these offerings um, before the priests to offer up. Um, <clears throat> as the people um, they desired, they could do this. They could bring peace offerings. Um, that's kind of like, it's manifest that if you need to keep continually bringing these offerings, um, 
that that you're you're acknowledging the fact that you have no peace. You have no peace if you have to continually as you realize I need to bring a peace offering to God and you have to continually do that. You realize you're realizing and admitting something. I don't have this peace. Um, <clears throat> and they continually admitted this um, and their need uh, that, that only God could do. Um, consider just, um, just the second time that a peace offering was made. The second time it's mentioned that a peace offering was made was when Aaron made it on the same, the same, the day right after they, he, he made that, that golden calf, right? Um, <clears throat> Aaron made a golden image for the people when they, when they asked for this. They, they asked for, for him, and he, he went and, and took all their gold and, and, and made this golden calf for them, this image that they were worshiping. Um, but at the same time, he determined the next day to keep the feasts to the Lord. The very next day, we're going to keep the feast to the Lord. And Exodus 32, 6 says, And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. <clears throat> now, if you recall, that very same day, 3,000 were cut down by the swords of the, Le of the Levites. <clears throat> that very same day. That was in the morning. Later on, the Levites said, we're on the Lord's side. And then they were told to go and, and cut them down. <clears throat> so uh, just how effective were those peace offerings that morning when they went to God for, with these? <clears throat> um, so hundreds of years would pass. Hundreds of thousands of peace offerings every day, all the time, would come and go. <clears throat> and there still was no peace. No peace. The people continued in their rebellion. They continued to sin. They continued down this path that leads to destruction. Continually, over and over. And they, they almost got worse and worse. <clears throat> Turning to idols and, and false gods. And So what mankind required was something that they could not offer for themselves. No matter how, how far they went, how much they tried, they... This could not be done for themselves. <clears throat> what they needed was exactly what God was willing and determined to do himself. Amen. How, about, how about that? <laughs> God had already determined he was going to do this. Amen. He was even willing. See, we don't want to think about the, the peace that God offers as if he's, he's offering it, but he doesn't really want to give it. You know, that, that's not... It. God is he's willing to do this, and he's determined. He's, he already determined... To do this, remember, he, he gave the, the, the law for the peace offerings before the people even realized they needed this. How, how about this? Before he ever said, let there be light. Before, before he ever framed men or formed him or gave, made him in his own image, God was already ordained Christ. He has already done this Amen. to die. <clears throat> to make, rede to redeem these people that he would create. <clears throat> I want to talk about something that's already been brought up today, and that's reconciliation. <clears throat> you see, what happened when men sinned was there was, they, they've like departed. They went away. They left the Lord. Um, it wasn't God. I want to be clear. It's not God who needs to be reconciled to men. It was men. It was us who needed to be reconciled to God. See, men were the ones who went astray. Men were the ones who sinned against their God. We are the ones who left <clears throat> and fell, uh, fell down. And so God, what God is doing is he's reconciling to himself. He's bringing us back. He sent Jesus, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. And so what God is doing is, is through Christ making this reconciliation. He's bringing this peace uh, in Christ. <clears throat> now I want to open this up um, and talk about this. Um, now I want to, there, there are two texts I want to look at concerning specifics, uh, the specifics of the gospel and the, um, 
and what God accomplished in Christ and in, in, in this reconciliation. First, I want to look at um, what's already been read in Colossians um, 1, 19 through 23, and just to remind us of what was said here. In Colossians 1, 19 through 23, if, you don't, if you're familiar with Colossians 1 or you're not, Colossians 1 is, is like, it's talking about God and his Christ, what God was doing in Christ, and, and, and we see here the, uh, like the eternal purpose of God <clears throat> and what God is doing in the earth with Christ <clears throat> and in like from an eternal perspective. And this is 19, it says, For it pleased the Father that in him, that's in Christ, should all fullness dwell, and having made peace, having made peace through the blood of his cross, having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether, whether they be things in heaven or things in earth. And you, that were sometime alien, alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he rec hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. I'm going to just skip to the end real quick and, and then come back, but, but that last part there, to, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, that's like the end of what, this is like what peace is with God is pointing to. Like peace, God made peace between us because this is what he's accomplishing in doing that, is that in the end we will stand before him unreprovable and unre, uh, unblameable unbla um, and, and holy in a holy God's sight. <clears throat> it's before him. And so, and he goes on and says, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached uh, to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. I also want to look at um, <clears throat> uh, Col uh, 2 Corinthians 5 concerning this also. So what we're seeing here is what God is doing in Christ. What God is doing in Christ and with Christ and through Christ is he's, he's reconciling us to God, to himself. <clears throat> he says here, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God and, and who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. He's reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's, this, that's what he's done is he's brought us to himself by Jesus Christ. See, we were the ones who had to be brought back. We had to be brought back. Man, mankind, I'm not just talking, as individuals for sure, as, but mankind needed to be brought back. Now, <clears throat> now we know also this is a personal experience. Like, as, as Brother Jason already said, this isn't he, we're not just, you can't just walk out to mankind and see that everyone's reconciled to God and have peace with God. We know this not to be the case. There's, there's not peace with God in the world. There's men who still need to be reconciled. That's, so we have this ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. <clears throat> to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ Amen. now we're going to get into this we're ambassadors for Christ as, as though God did um <clears throat> did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ said, be ye reconciled to God. The provision has been made. We, he is, he's made this available to all of mankind. Any man can now turn to God and go to him and be reconciled to him because God has done something in Christ. He's, he's made this available. Here's another text in, in Romans 5.1. Therefore, 
being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God, but that's, that's not all. Through. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's, you have peace with God through him. And so this is what we're talking about, the gospel being preached. We believed that. We, were, we, we, we believed the word that was preached concerning uh, what God has done in Christ, and we are justified by faith. We believed what God said, the record, justified by faith, and because of this, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, you could say it also, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. God, see, God, the, God is just and the justifier of him that believes in his son. God is, he, see, so what we have is, is God remaining righteous and, and, and also justifying men because they believed on his son. Uh, <clears throat> so God being righteous can actually show peace and, and, or have peace with men. Um, they've kissed each other. Now I want to, uh, I want to talk about this, this preaching. That's what we're talking about in the gospel. The gospel is, is the, uh, the announcement or the preaching of what God did and what we have in Christ um, available. <clears throat> and so now it's uh, the good news. Because God did this and he did this work, he accomplished it, the good news can now go forth. It can go out. It can be preached um, because God did a crucial and a good work um, on, uh, in, in, in the sacrifice and offering of Jesus Christ, his lamb. The preaching can, can now commence because God did a work. There, there was a work done in the cross, God reconciling the world unto himself. God, God is making now available this peace that we can actually come to him and have peace. Now, now the preaching can go forth. The preaching can go out. Now those who are standing upon the mountains can preach a word. Yes, this, this gospel of peace. Yes. That there is now, you don't have to be at odds with God anymore. Amen. You don't have to stand as an enemy of a righteous God anymore. <clears throat> you don't have to face the wrath of God anymore. Here's Jesus. This is what he did. This is what God did in him. Believe that and be reconciled to God. <clears throat> so Jesus preached peace. So he did. That he might reconcile both unto God. This, this is an amazing thought too. This, these, you have, in the world you have men who have also been reconciled to each other or, or made peace between, you have the Jews and the Gentiles. They've been brought together also by one into one uh, into Christ. <clears throat> Peace has been made between them. He's reconciled them both unto God. That's like, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or you're a Gentile, you can be reconciled to God. It doesn't matter if you were the one who received the law of, of the peace offerings or, or not, you can be reconciled to God. God has made this available for all men. <clears throat> and so Jesus, it says in Ephesians 2, and he made uh, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that are nigh. For through him both we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Amen. Now this is now this peace had to be preached to both them who are far off, and to them that were, they both had the same issue. Amen. It doesn't matter if you were a Jew or you were a Gentile, you had the same problem. Your problem with God was the same one. You were at enmity with God. And you both need the same, the same word. The same gospel was preached. Amen. To them who are far off, and to them that are nigh. Peace. There's peace with God. It's available to you. <clears throat> and so I want to consider um, 
also this this thought. I, I haven't even touched my text yet, and I want to get there. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the texts that I have are Ephesians six um, thirteen through or fifteen, and uh, Romans um, fifteen, Romans ten fifteen. I want to first look at the uh, um, Ephesians six. I'm going to read thirteen through fifteen. It says, "Wherefore." Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, making your, uh, having your, girt, your loins girt about with truth, and having, your bre- uh, having the breast, breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I found it to be uh, uh, interesting that the um, a lot of texts that can that are um, uh, about the the preaching of the gospel of peace or preaching of peace or proclaiming peace or publishing peace, like old and new. Whether you're you're talking about the the law and the prophets or you're talking about um, the 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 apostles' writing, um, there's like this the connection to feet. Having your feet shod, right, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Or, or how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet, Amen. right, of those who, who publish peace. Um, how beautiful are the feet, right. <clears throat> and um, I was thinking about this. Um, the feet are like your point of contact with the earth. That's like the point in which you touch the earth. You stand upon your feet, right? <clears throat> now, I was thinking about this, the earth. The earth is a, is a place where this, is a, this, this word is relevant in the earth. The gospel of peace is relevant in the earth. Amen. It is in the earth where men fell, Amen. right? It is in the earth where, where men dwell. Amen. It's in the earth where this gospel message is relevant. Amen. Um, and so you stand in the earth right now. Now, now, now this is a, you're standing upon mountains. You are, those who preach this stand upon mountains. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them who publish peace, right? Upon the mountains. Now you're standing upon a mountain. When you're standing upon a mountain, you, you've overcome something. You've gotten somewhere. You've done something to stand upon a mountain. You don't just stumble upon a, a mountain and like just end up at, uh, on this mountain. You, you, you might stumble and fall down a mountain, but you don't st- stumble up a mountain. You have to have something was accomplished when you came to a mountain and you stand upon it, when you're standing on it. And so what this is, those who preach the gospel of peace are those who have already come up high. Amen. They are the ones who come nigh unto God. <clears throat> So those who, who can publish this word in the earth, who can preach it, who can proclaim it, who can say it to, 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 to mankind, God has made this provision. Those who do that are those who have believed. <clears throat> those who have come up the mountain. Uh, <clears throat> and from whatever mountain you're at, you can say you have a word to preach. How beautiful are the, are the, 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 the feet of those who stand on the mountains. Um, <clears throat> also, the, uh, um, the, the peace that we have with God didn't originate with the earth. It had, to come from, it had to come from God. God had to make this provision. God is, what, God is the one who, who did this. The only time peace was ever proclaimed, peace on earth, was when one came from heaven to earth. Right? Right? Glory to God in the highest and uh, peace, peace on earth, goodwill to, to men. That's when, that's when one came from above to the earth. And so, so the gospel of peace is, is a message of what God did from heaven and is affected, or has affected the earth. Um, so don't look to the earth for peace. Don't look to the earth for peace. Don't, what we have is men in this world looking to the earth to find peace. They're, they're completely ignorant of the fact that they... Their problem is with God, not with, with their neighbor. 
not with the politics of our day. Not, that's not the issue. When you go and try to pursue those kinds of, that kind of peace, there is no peace. You can only attempt and have and experience maybe temporal peace. But we're talking about an eternal peace with God. <clears throat> and only God can provide it, and only that peace can come from above. So don't, don't, don't be deceived and look for the earth to provide this kind of peace. Amen. God's going to provide this kind of peace. <clears throat> but we do stand in the earth and publish this kind of peace. <clears throat> um, and announce it. Um, he also says how, how beautiful are the feet. How beautiful. The, these, the feet that go and publish this word, they're beautiful. <clears throat> they're beautiful feet. Um, I also want to um, consider Jesus said some of the most profound things about peace. Some of the, the most profound things have come from his mouth. Why? Because, well, he is our peace. <laughs> See, if anybody knows anything about this peace, it's him. Jesus said, uh, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. I'm going to give you my peace. Now, if there, has there ever been a, a, a division between the Father and the Son? Have there, has, there, has there ever been a disagreement? Now, what's the, like, the, the standard for peace? Is it not the Father and the Son? What's the standard for perfect unity? Right? Is it not the Father and the Son? Right? Um, I and him and him and me and you and us. That's like the standard of perfect unity. And he's bringing us into that. There's a standard for perfect peace. And that's between the Father. They always, do, they always are in agreement. Jesus said, I always do those things that please the Father. He's, he's not going astray or going rogue. He's doing the things that please the Father. They're in, they're in accord. And everything they do, they are in accord. And so what, what he's doing is this peace that I have, I'm going to give it to you. <clears throat> See, we can actually like have this kind of peace with God. Where what we can do is in accord with what God, what God does, what he says. And there's no, dis we can actually live a life without disagreeing with God. We can agree with what he says. We can say, amen. Yes, I believe what you say, God. I love what you say. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus said. We, we, uh, the words of God, they're not, his commandments aren't grievous. We are in agreement with God. That we have experienced this peace that, that he has. How about this? Jesus experienced an, uh, a, this, this kind of peace in the earth where, remember, he was in a boat and he was sleeping. And you remember what was going on in the boat around it? it was, there was a, they were in the middle of a storm, right? They, they, the, the, the ones who were there with them thought they were going to all die that day. They, they thought the boat was going down, and Jesus is asleep. See, now that's, now that's peace. See, we actually, I want to kind of apply this a little bit. We can experience the storm around us and, and like, rest. We can look around us and see you, you don't have to like turn on the news for very long and know that there's a storm am amongst us. We're in the midst of a storm. Whatever it is, there's ungodliness everywhere. There we have enemies everywhere, and yet we can, we can rest. We can be at peace. We can experience the kind of peace that Jesus had. <clears throat> Remember, he, he rebuked the storm. He said, peace, be still. Peace, be still. I was uh, thinking about this as well. Um, only God can do this. Only God can take an enemy and like make true peace. Amen. Only God can take his, his very enemies, those who have, who have, well, you can just take some examples. You have the Apostle Paul. Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jesus said. And yet you have now this you have this, uh, he's wor wor a worker together with God. <laughs> right? So, but only God can do this. Only God can take a, a true enemy and make him a true, he, he can take enemies and make them sons and daughters unto him. He can take enemies and make them in, in agreement with him. Amen. He can take enemies and make them desire the things that he has for them. Amen. Only God can do that. See, now this is, see, this is the kind of peace that God provides. Is he's taking enemies. And, and those who have who've believed this word, and he can make them, 
He can bring them into accord with him. <clears throat> Jesus said this concerning peace. <clears throat> he said later on after he said that, he said, in the world you'll have trouble. Right? But be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. <clears throat> See, in the world, whatever's going on, we, we can be of good cheer. Right? I have overcome the world. He said that in me you will, have, you will find peace. In me you will find peace. In the world you'll have trouble. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. <clears throat> I want to um, leave you with, with these last thoughts. Um, <clears throat> God has provided us with uh, resources um, that have the ability, if we let them, if we let them, uh, to keep us, to stabilize us, um, <clears throat> uh, and, and specifically those parts of us that, that have the tendency to waver or to, like, to falter in any way. <clears throat> so, for instance, you have a soul. Now, your soul can be downcast. Your soul can be vexed. Your soul can be troubled. Your soul can be subverted. Your soul can experience all kinds of things. What do we have from heaven that God has given us for an anchor of the soul? We have hope as an anchor of the soul. Amen. What about this? We have a spirit. What is, God, what is provided? We have a, the spirit of God makes, bears witness with our spirit that we are. So if you ever have this doubt or wonder, you have a spirit testifying with your spirit that you are a child of God. And so God provides all these, he, he provides heavenly resources for these parts of us that can waver or, or can, so what do we have? We have a heart. We have a heart. <clears throat> Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be troubled. <clears throat> he said this, um, the apostle Paul said, concerning, concerning what you have for the heart, <clears throat> he said, let, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. <clears throat> let it rule in your hearts, to the which is also, <clears throat> to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Jesus said, let not, let not your heart be troubled, let it <clears throat> Neither let it be afraid. <clears throat> this, see, this is, this is also said. And the peace of God which passeth understanding shall keep your hearts <clears throat> and minds through Christ Jesus. Um, <clears throat> I have some more good news. I'm going to leave you with this. This peace um, that we have uh, from God and with God is not a temporal peace. It's not a temporal peace or a peace that is due to eventually expire or run out. <clears throat> See, what we have from God is an eternal peace, an everlasting peace. If you've been, if you've been reconciled to God and you have peace with God, it's, you can expect that to last as long as you stay with him forever an everlasting peace. Because, because of this, because the one who is our peace and who our peace is by and in ever lives to make intercession for us. And he will not die. He will not die. He will not expire. By his death, we are reconciled to God. And much more being reconciled, we are saved by his life. <clears throat> See, in, e in Egypt, um, there was only peace between the Israelites and the Egyptians as long as Joseph was alive and, alive and remembered, right? <clears throat> but when he died, he was forgotten. Uh, and was unknown, and the peace ceased. There was, they were made slaves, remember. The peace ceased. 
But as long as Christ lives, we have peace with God. So here's the good news, brethren. God put peace in one who will never die. We are saved by the life of one whose life will never end. And so there is, this is a sure salvation. So what we have is the Prince of Peace. <clears throat> this is what's said of him. Of the increase of his government and peace, there, it, there shall be no end. Amen. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat>